welcome back. We're going to take a look at everything you need to know for topic 12, which is the HL atomic structure section. So this topic really goes over further evidence for energy levels in an atom, and it uses ionization energy as evidence. So remember ionization energy is the energy it takes to remove one electron from a gaseous atom. So if we were to take a look at aluminum, which has 13 protons and 13 electrons, we could remove all of those electrons and we can look at how much energy is required to remove each of those electrons. Just a few terms to remember. Valence electrons are the electrons in the highest energy level and they are the electrons involved in bonding. So let's take a look at this graph that we have. We have ionization number or like the number of electrons that have been removed against the ionization energy or the energy that it required to make that happen. So aluminum, if we remember, has three valence electrons, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1, and we can use this data as evidence that these energy levels exist. So let's take a look. 3p1 would be the electron that's lost first because it's the farthest from the nucleus. So the first ionization of aluminum we can see has the lowest amount of energy and that makes sense that is logical so here's our 3p sublevel notice 3s takes a little bit more energy to remove and that also makes sense logically because as we move down the energy levels we should be getting closer and closer and closer to the nucleus so 3s and notice there's quite a large gap here. And that means that we have now removed all of our valence electrons. Anything after this point will take a significant amount of energy to remove. So these electrons here, let's see how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This corresponds to energy level two. Energy level two. Because if we look at the electron configuration, there's eight electrons in energy level two. And then there's another huge gap, and that takes us to energy level one, which is the closest to the nucleus, 1s energy level. And it's the closest to the nucleus. So logically, that should take the most energy to remove those two electrons because those are the closest electrons to the nucleus. And again, what this graph is showing us is that it takes more energy each time we remove an electron and there are predictable gaps when we jump an energy level. So here's energy level three, two, and one. And I can use this data, this type of data, to predict what group an element will be in. So let's say that I had a graph like this. This is all the information that I have. And I'm asked, what group is this element in? What is the group number? What group number? Well, I can look at the data. I see that I have four electrons of similar ionization energy. And then I have a huge gap. And then I have some more electrons so what this gap is telling me is that there should be a change in energy level between these two groups of electrons. And I can also safely assume that all of these are going to be the valence electrons. Because if we look back up at aluminum's graph, we have our first three valence electrons and then we have our giant gap in our graph. So these four should be the valence electrons. So again, I know there's four valence electrons. So if there are four valence electrons, this should be in group 14 on the periodic table. So all that chapter 12 covers that's different is that it shows the ionization energy of removing every single electron of an atom and how we can use that to prove that there are energy levels in an atom. I hope this was helpful. If you have any other questions, make sure and leave a comment. 
Thank you so much for stopping by.